In this video, I'll be taking you through the process of creating a projection mapping light show from start to finish in the Luxedo app. Using a new software is always somewhat daunting, and projection mapping is no different. With such a technical field, it's easy to assume that any software that's part of that field will also be really technical and confusing. But I'm here to show you how straightforward the Luxedo app actually is. Once you've calibrated your device and produced a snapshot like so, you can move on to making a show. If you haven't done this, make sure to watch our video guide on calibration. The next step, then, is to go to the My Shows tab. Now we click Create Scene. Before we go into the scene editor, I want to quickly mention this button right here. Work with a professional. Luxedo is currently working on a content market, where customers will be able to quickly and easily access a shop for tailor-made content for their house. If that's something that interests you, just remember you'll be able to find it right here. Anyways, let's click Create Your Own. We'll need to set a few things up first. Let's start by naming it Christmas Scene 2025. I'll also add a tag. These are really useful for searching up your shows when you have a whole bunch of them. Let's call our tag Christmas. We have a few other different options here, but since we only have one snapshot to choose from, we're good to move on to creating our scene. Okay, here we can see my house, so it's time to get mapping. The way this works is actually pretty straightforward. This picture is a mathematically calculated image that allows for anything you place on the canvas here to appear exactly the same in real life. Typically, the first step for creating a projection mapping light show is going to be masking. We have a full guide on how to mask, which we'll link in the description, but for now, let's take a quick look at how it works anyways. Essentially, masks will allow you to set zones where you can include or exclude content. A good example might be my windows, since I may not want to project directly into them. So let's click Mask and go ahead and name this Window 1. Now we click Create Mask and line it up on the canvas. Voila! Now we rinse and repeat. Okay, great. All my windows are masked out, but they're crowding out my timeline down here. Let's put them all in a group together so they take up less space. I can drag each masked layer into this top one, for example, and then they'll be able to all be collapsed by selecting the yellow drop-down arrow. While we're at it, I'll also rename this from Window 5 to Windows. I'm not quite done masking just yet, though. I'd like to mask out the two main facades of the house, and I may as well mask out my gardening box. In order to do this, I'm going to need to use the free draw tool, which allows me to edit around the shapes with much more precision. Alright, and so now that we have all of our masks, I'll put the other ones in a separate group and we are good to start making our show. By far the most important part of your show is going to be media. You can upload your own media or use our growing public media library, but either way, these will be the fundamental building blocks for each scene you make. Let's start by having a quick look at some of our public media assets. When you click media on the left hand side, there's a few things you'll immediately see in our public media library. Let's take a look at our pre-made light shows first. This FX Projections Christmas light show is a fantastic show, and if you need a quick little demo of what our software can do, add this to your scene. We can actually apply a mask right now, so let's select Main Facade here and click Apply to do so. And voila! A show like this isn't custom made to map to our house, but can be masked out to fit, more or less, your projection space. This was made by our very own in-house content creation team, and if you want to get shows of this quality, we'll be offering them on our website. Anyways, I want to do something maybe a little bit more tailor-made to my house, so let's take a look at some other public media options. Before I forget, now is a good time to mention that you should frequently be saving your shows. You can save your progress by clicking the Save button here in the bottom left corner. Okay, now we go back up to our media and we're going to look for something a little different this time. Maybe instead of our pre-made light shows, we'll have a look at some of our premium assets. 
In this case, we're going to be going to Jolly Holiday shows, things made by Jolly Holiday. And you know what? I really like the look of this rock wall snow, so let's just add this to our scene. I can expand the edges to be exactly what I want them to be, so for the time being, let's put it on our secondary facade, because I've got something of an idea brewing for what I'm going to do with my main facade. I'm going to make it last for the exact same time as the rock wall snow, so let me adjust that in the timeline here. And I want this to cover my actual door, so let's shrink it down. Now because of the rock wall, we can't really see where the door is, so I'm going to go down here and click this little button to hide the image for now, and so now I can get a much better idea of what I'm working with. So I'm going to try to line it up a little bit, but you know, this still isn't doing the trick because I can't see behind the door either. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to adjust the opacity down to 27%, which means I'm going to be able to see a little bit behind and we can now transform the image to perfectly line up with the door. Okay, great. Now I need to remember to turn the opacity back up because if you forget, it's going to end up showing at 27% the brightness you want it to in real life. Now public media is great and all, but if you really want to make custom shows, you'll want to use your own creativity in media. There's a million different ways to find good media, but let's take a look at one of the best resources. In general, Googling what you're looking for is the best way to find content, but if I had to pick any one website to recommend, it'd be pixabay.com. Pixabay contains a massive selection of royalty-free images and stock photos, and this includes some fantastic Christmas resources. If you're looking for something cool, I'd recommend just typing it up here. So in this case, I have an idea for a sort of banner that's going to say Merry Christmas on it, so I'm just going to search up Merry Christmas banner and see what I can find. And look at this. This is exactly what I'm looking for. And with Pixabay, you have a couple of different options for your download, but either way, you click right over here. I'm going to have four different ones I can choose. I'm going to pick the highest resolution image, and there you go. It's downloading. Thanks, Rachel Marie. Now that we've got this, let's head back to the Luxedo editor and upload our media. After clicking on media, move over to the My Media tab instead of the Public Media tab and click Upload Media. Then you'll just drag and drop your downloaded images, and voila. I'm going to go ahead and rename it too so it's easier to identify, and I also wanted to mention that anything uploaded through the My Media page of the Luxedo app will also appear right in this little page. Okay, let's go ahead and add this to our scene. Now, I'm going to wait before I finalize its placement, but for now it can just sit right here. Now let's go get some more content. Alright, I want to show you two great pieces of media I found on Pixabay. The first one is this little Christmas tree animation that I would love to play as the background on my main facade. I've already downloaded this one and I'll be adding it to my editor in just a moment, but I also wanted to show you this. This is a selection of 2,838 copyright-free Jingle Bells covers. In particular, I'm having a look at this one right here. After downloading that one as well, I'm ready to add this back to my Luxedo Editor Media. It's worth noting that you can put media together in groups just like you could with masks, and I'm going to do that for the media I have on my secondary facade just so I can keep it nice and organized. Now let's add in both of my pieces of media and apply the correct masks. Okay, so let's start off with this one, the one I wanted to be the main background for my facade. It is going to have to be stretched a little bit to fit, it's not the exact same shape as my facade, so we'll see what I can do.
But what I actually would like to do is to apply all of the windows as masks, and then I'm going to be able to select the show outside button so it exclusively projects outside of the windows. Okay. I think I've got all the individual pieces ready for my show, but it definitely hasn't come all together just yet. Let's fix that, shall we? Organizing your show can mostly be done through this timeline at the bottom. Currently, it's something of a mess, but we'll get to work quickly. I want this show to be as long as the music is, so let's drag the edge of the timeline out of course. Okay, it looks like actually my video is not long enough to drag it out fully. So we're gonna go click the settings and we're going to adjust the scene length and okay, let's try this again. Okay, now if you fully extend this, you'll notice that there's this looping icon. That just means that whenever you drag out media past its intended end, it's just going to immediately do a loop instead. And I think it makes sense for this show to just be as long as the music is, so I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the length of all of my other pieces of media to fit with this as well. Okay, now I need to make sure that everything is in the right order. For starters, I like to have my audio track at the bottom, so I'm just going to move it down. We also need to make sure that the Merry Christmas banner is appearing on top of the background we set, so let's make sure to drag that above. While we're at it, I'm going to go ahead and adjust the Merry Christmas banner to be exactly where I want it to be in the first place. I think I'm going to slot it in. We'll make it a little bigger and slot it in right between these windows. Now for me, these pieces are pretty much set in stone, so I'm gonna go ahead and lock them within the timeline. So now you can see that when I try to interact with them, whether I try to drag the edges of the timeline out or I try to click them and move them, they're just not going to move. This can of course be changed by unlocking all the pieces, but this is really helpful if you're trying to move very specific media while keeping the whole show from being moved. Ah, okay, and I did just notice, hold on, if you look at this, uh, I did not fully extend the background to meet the edges of my house, so let me go ahead and unlock this piece of media, and we're going to fix that. Okay, and there you go. Now we can just lock it back up, and we're ready to move on. Okay, cool. We are almost done here, but let's watch it through just to make sure it is up to our standards. Okay, great. I mean, it's pretty basic, but honestly, it's really not bad for something I put together in all of 15 minutes. And we'll just need to save and render. This can take a little bit of time, but once your scene is rendered, you're ready to play your show. I hope you found this video useful. Make sure to check out our other guides on our YouTube channel or our help pages. Now, be creative and go get mapping.